Thanks for staying with us. I'm Sarah McIntyre filling in for Jerry Agar. Well, of course, those were the wind turbine protesters protesting the wind government and the Green Energy Act. Are all, of course, we're all feeling it every time we get our electricity bill. It just seems to keep going up. And as the cold winter hits, it's going to be hitting you even harder in your pocketbook. Joining me to talk about the Christmas Day present from Kathleen Wynn is uh, Parker Gallant. You're Parker, you're with Wind Concerns Ontario. You put out a pretty interesting news release on Christmas Day saying the gift that keeps on giving the Ontario Liberals. What, what did they give us this year? Well, they gave us all a lump of coal as far as I'm concerned. Us mm -hmm. ratepayers in Ontario, at least. But, but they gave away a lot to uh, our neighbors in New York and Michigan. Well, can you explain that to me? I, a lot of people don't really understand the, uh, well, uh, I don't understand the electricity grid. So how is it that we're giving money to different jurisdictions um, through, through our electricity rates? Well, uh, the, the way the uh, electricity system operates is that we have base load operations, which are, you know, nuclear is one of those. So we okay. can't turn nuclear on and off as easy as some other forms of uh, energy that's like being Like hydro, generated. for example. Hydro is easy. Yeah. You just spill it Damn over it, the yeah. falls instead of running it through the turbines. Right. Uh, so we have, uh, uh, and our demand on, on Christmas Day was extremely low. It was only uh, 325,000 megawatts, which is a very you know, light day in terms mm -hmm. of demand. But it was fairly warm, but it was also windy. And when yeah. it's windy, uh, the wind turbines uh, produce a lot of energy. And as we build more and more of these turbines or add more and more of them to the mm -hmm. grid, what happens is the grid becomes, uh, if you will, uh, dangerously uh, close to, to uh, causing blackouts or brownouts. There's only so much electricity that can be carried over the transmission lines. Right. And uh, because of that, uh, the IESO, which is the Independent Electricity System Operator, has to either curtail uh, you know, the production of certain generation of electricity or they have to uh, basically export it. And that's what we were doing a lot of on Christmas Day. We were exporting a lot of the surplus energy that we produced. So we had surplus energy, we exported it at a discount, but as Ontario ratepayers, we were paying more for it than we were selling it. Well, there supposedly is a, what we refer to as a, a wholesale uh, market that uh, electricity. Oh, okay. Here we've got our, on Christmas board up here, just kind of explaining the cost to Ontarians. $16 million we, uh, it cost Ontarians on Christmas Day. And what does that mean it cost us six, $16 million? Well, it, we have contracts. Most of these contracts that have been signed with the wind generators and with uh, uh, the hydro, you know, even Ontario power generation yeah. and the others uh, all have uh, fixed price long-term contracts. So we're, we're guaranteeing that they're going to, if they produce energy, we're going to pay them so much money for that energy. Right. So they're going to get the money, you know, no matter what, if they produce it. And uh, because uh, we have to pay for that generation, if it's surplus and we're exporting it, and we're exporting at a loss, which mm -hmm. is what happened on, uh, on the Christmas day, we actually were paying New York and Michigan to take our power, we're paying $7.45 for each and every megawatt. So we were giving them the power for free and paying them at the same time. And the actual cost of producing or generating that uh, power was about $7 million. Wow, that is unbelievable. So the Ontario Liberals bring in the Green Energy Act. They basically stipulate that if you build a solar farm or a wind turbine, that they will guarantee you a rate, whether or not you're producing power. And um, if you're, that we have a situation like we do on Christmas Day, where it's mild weather and we have a surplus of energy, we end up having to, us Ontario ratepayers, basically pay Michigan and New York to take our power from us. That's right. You've got it. And, and there's a lot of other things that happen in the background, too, because we've got these gas plants, some of which have been moved. Uh, basically, the gas plants were being built to back up the wind and solar uh, generators, because right. if the clouds pass overhead or the wind doesn't blow, we still need the power. Yeah, they're still sitting there dead, but yeah. and we're still paying for it. But we pay for the gas plants as yeah. well yeah. for sitting there idling, right? Yeah, and Rebecca Thompson, who of course did the Down with Wind uh, documentary here on Sun News. Rebecca, were you surprised to see uh, the, the news release out on uh, Christmas Day that 
Ontarian ratepayers are paying to actually export our our own electricity? Well, no. I mean, Parker's been doing these reports now for quite a long time, and it seems that every month, Parker, you've been releasing information about how much money is going down the drain when it comes to spending uh, or, or spilling out cash to our neighbor, neighboring jurisdictions. I think you pegged it at, what, $275 million that Ontario lost just in the first six months of 2014. Yeah. And so this is an ongoing challenge from an economic model. Uh, wind energy hasn't made sense, and Parker has, has pointed out the fact that it's so heavily subsidized. Uh, and the worst part of this is, Sarah, that, you know, other than Parker, who tells this story mm -hmm. and Sun News Network? How many news networks do you see telling the story about how much money is going down the drain? How many people in Ontario hear on their six o'clock news or on their Twitter feed or on you know the major headlines of newspapers that yet again we have more money going the da down the drain because of the way that the Ontario government has set up this electricity system? Well, and that's the that's the major point I think is that it's it was structured by the Liberal government and the contracts were negotiated so that individual that these companies that build these turbines would make money regardless of whether or not they're making energy and at the end of the day what does that mean it means higher electricity bill costs now Parker have you done anything to look at on average what it costs the average rate payer in a year on their electricity bill for all of this kind of bumbling and um, of the electricity system that the Ontario Liberals have caused the average rate payer I, I think I looked at the 2012 numbers and just for the export side of it it was mm -hmm. well over the cost of the rate payers that year a billion dollars so what would that, do you know what that would mean in an average uh, An average bill, I mean, there's bill? four and a half, four and a half million rate pairs approximately in the, in the province. So four and a half million into a billion gives you uh, about $200 uh, each. Well, and that's a big, that's a big $200. When you're looking at, at you know, people are facing kind of energy poverty uh, in this province as your electricity bills are going through the roof. If you are on a fixed income, that is a sizable amount of money to be dishing out basically so that the Liberals could hand out contracts to their friends to bring, to build wind turbines. Yeah. Well, yeah, and you know, the, the Ontario government was, was heavily criticized about a year ago because there was information released that people's bills in the next five to eight years are going to skyrocket to 50% more than what they are now. You know, it's just uh, it's just a, an example of the fact that the Ontario government is not being accountable for the fact that they have set up this electricity system that they themselves have admitted mm -hmm. uh, will, the costs will go up and yet they're not going to do anything about it. Well, and the Auditor General was just out with a report criticizing the management and implementation of smart meters and, and the Liberal government's response was what? Well, yeah, it's too complex for yeah. us to understand. But I yeah. think, basically, it's not that complex. The system can be explained uh, reasonably easy, easily. It's just that the way the Liberals have set the system up, that uh, mm -hmm. they're duplicating everything. We didn't need wind turbines and solar panels. Mm -hmm. And when they contracted for them, they contracted at rates that were far higher than rates that were being paid in Europe and the United States. I mean, why, why they gave away the uh, ship was beyond my comprehension. You know, the other line of defense the Ontario Liberals give is that they had to update the infrastructure, update the transmission lines. Which, which is, is very expensive. Which is, which is why the cost is going mm -hmm. up. But guess what? Transmission lines are being put in the ground to accommodate wind power. Yeah. Yeah. And so we wouldn't be incurring this cost if we didn't have to set up these small wind farms all over the province that are wreaking havoc upon families and farms. Yeah, and I wanted to, because it's the most inefficient way, because you basically have one uh, one transmission line that has to go out to each and every turbine to feed into the system, and then you've got power losses along the way, of course. So it's um, for whatever you know greenhouse gas or carbon footprint you may have alleviated by this uh, one particular turbine, if you actually look at the entire life cycle of you know digging into the ground for the transmission line building the, the actual turbine and dismantling the turbine it's going to be basically the same as hydro it's really not any real carbon uh, um, advantage to be building wind but of course we're not going to hear that story no and i think uh, there's actually been studies done by the power workers union and by others i think uh, the society of engineers mm -hmm. that state that uh, if we keep adding more and more wind we need more and more 
gas plants, fossil fuels to back it up. Yeah. We're actually going to increase the emissions instead of decreasing them. So, well, just stick your head in the stand and keep moving forward. Yeah. That seems to be the Kathleen Way and 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 her approach. So, um, Rebecca, I know when you were doing your documentary, you were asking Health Canada about the risks of these turbines. As you say, they are kind of dotted all over the landscape in Ontario. Um, some of them very close to uh, homes. There's been a number of effects of that. They have a study. Is that going to be released in 2015? Part of the study already has been mm -hmm. released, um, and there's been a call to actually analyze the raw data because the raw data. Does does indicate that the closer you are to these wind turbines, the the greater of an effect they will have on on you and your health and your mental health, for example. Uh, one thing is, just before I came in here, there's breaking news today that um, there was a, tr a tribunal. Uh, three judges had to rule on whether or not uh, the wind turbines and the tribune and the uh, decision to put the wind turbines up violated the constitutional rights of various families. The uh, the Ontario uh, tribunal decided to dismiss the appeal from the families, oh. and so it, which is you know in, in perhaps not. Um, you know, surprising, you know, but it's, it's it, very unfortunate for those those families. It's not surprising, you know. They, I haven't read through the whole ruling. Um, mm -hmm. They indicated that the Ontario government did its due diligence in, you know, in deciding whether or not these turbines would go up. Uh, however, that said, the amount of effort and money coming out of these families' pockets, pouring it, pouring into the, you know, legal bills to fight the constitutionality of the Ontario government's um, Green Energy Act, uh, is huge, and so. Mm -hmm. It's sad from that point of view, the amount of personal effort put in by these families to try to fight these wind turbines all the way up to divisional court. Yeah, well, it seems like it's almost a David and Goliath um, fight where all the power rests with Kathleen Wynne and the Liberal government and their friends that are running wind turbine companies and ratepayers, property owners, be damned. So we're going to have to leave it there, but thanks so much. Hopefully we'll be talking about this more in the new year because, as you say, no one else is actually talking about this kind of highway highway robbery that we're, we're in we're in with these uh, wind turbines.